I like to show you how to, how to calculate first and follow sets for any look ahead, that means for any LLK grammar. And for that I just show you how to do it for a look ahead of four. So I hope you can generalize from that. So that means I like to calculate the first set of the length of four of S. And I don't want to write so much, so I will just write um, F first of four from A. And I would like to calculate the first set of the length of four of B. And I also need to calculate them for, for all right hand side of the rules. That means I want to calculate the first set of length four of ABA. And also I like to calculate them for BA, that is this right hand side of the rule. And I like to calculate it for the A, which is very easy. And also for the right hand side of, of those B productions, so for AS. Let me do the easy one first. In the first set of any terminal string is of course just the terminal string, so in this case it's A. And I wanted to calculate the first set of the length of 4. But if I have a terminal string that's shorter than 4, then I just write down the terminal string. So it's just not longer than that, but that's okay, like this. And that is the second easy one. If I do a derivation step, then you see that you can just exchange the non-terminal A by a terminal A. And then you will just get the terminal string BA. And again, that is shorter than the, than the than four, um, four signs, four letters or something. But again, that is fine to have less than four. Next, let me do this one. And I will do it in another color. And I think the easiest one to do is, is to do some derivation steps. So when I have AIS, then I have two possibilities to derive uh, things from S. So my first, um, first I could exchange S by ABA. I will just copy both, I will just keep both A's in each possibility. But in the first one I will exchange S by ABA. And in the second possibility I could derive BA from, the, from that S. Now I have two strings um, that are, uh, or two chains of two chains that are longer than four signs, but um, I have a non-terminal on the fourth place, so I have to do more derivation steps. So I will exchange B by AAS. I have to keep the three A's. Then I exchange B by AAS and I keep the A behind them. And in this possibility, I have to exchange A by the terminal A. Now, um, I, I derived all possibilities. And, well, here's a string that, is, uh, has, that has exactly the length of 4. So I will just keep it and it's fine. And this one is just is longer, but I don't care about what's behind this because I wanted to just um, calculate the first set for a look at of four. So I will just um, keep the first four letters of it. And now um, I derived all possibilities that are possible for um, um, well for um, chains of letters that are derivable from this right-hand side rule. 
And I think that is the easiest possibility if you want to find the first set of any non-terminal or something, then I would just um, do all derivation steps that are possible until I have um, terminals, terminal strings of the length of four or more, and then, um, and when I have all possibilities, and can just copy um, the strings into the follow set. Now this one is left, and I will do some derivation steps to get the first set of that. In the first step I have to exchange B by AAS because there's no other possibility. Now here I have got the S and I have two possibilities to derive things from the S. And from the S I could, I could exchange the S by ABA. I have to keep the three A's that were before it. Now I exchange S by ABA. And I just keep the A from behind. Also doesn't really matter. And then I can exchange the S by BA and also keep the A from behind. And now I've got strings, that, terminal strings that are, or strings that are longer than my four signs, but it's just fine because I have uh, four terminals in the string at the beginning and with that I have my follow set. And I just copy the first one, AAA, AAA, A, four A's, and three A's and a B. And with that I'm done with finding the follow set for this right hand side of the rule. And for the first sets of the non-terminals I just have to, well I have to, um, I have to unify or I have to take the union of all right hand side rules of the first set of them. So for the B I just have this right hand side rule. I found the first set here, so the first set of the B is just AABA, or the same as here, and four A's. The first set of A, that's just those terminal A. And for the S, I have to take, well, for S I have two right hand side uh, two right hand side of the rule. So that means if I have an S, then I can just, well, I can just derive strings from that, or I can derive strings from that. So S will be the union of both sets, which are ABA, that's that one, and BA, that's that one. So I have to take the union of both sets. So that is from here, and then I take. 3 A's B and also B A from here and then I'm done with finding the first set for S. Now um, this three first sets I only need for the pass table which I will not draw in this video. Um, but to answer the question if this grammar is an LL4 grammar I have to check um, well, if you have, for example, an S, then you could derive strings from the left, from one rule or from another rule. If you can derive um, the same string of length 4 from both or from several rules, then um, you don't know which one to take if you are in that, um, in that uh, situation. So in this case, it would not allow for a deterministic LL4 parsing. So what I have to do is to see if both rules are disjoint from each, from each other. So if all rules that um, all rules that I can be um, derived from the same that are right hand sides from the same non-terminal if they are they have disjoint follow sets. That means this two that are the right hand side follow sets of the of those 
rules. This one has to be disjoint. Or these one have to be disjoint. And that's indeed the case. And, well, I don't need to check them if for A, because A has only one one rule, but I um, but all all sets have to be disjoint. So all first sets that belong to right hand sides of the same non terminal rule they have to be disjoint. And this uh, here it's the case. So that means yes, it's an LL four grammar because um, uh, you have here here you can derive strings of the length of four and which not do not appear here and vice versa. So this is indeed an LL4 grammar. And um, well, you would just need follow sets um, to check for LL4 when you have um, epsilon productions. Um, I explained it in my LL1 video why that's uh, why it is. And um, well, I don't need to calculate follow sets for this grammar, but I will do it anyway in the next video to just so show you how it works.